everybody, John here from Unbeatable Tech. Let's see how many ways we can improve this funnel I'm about to show you in about 30 minutes. All right, this video is going to be awesome because we're gonna do a live funnel review. There's one of our students in our main school who is getting excited to launch her first Facebook ad campaign to a funnel that has been converting and she's made over $1,000 in sales on it. And when I heard her email that she was really excited to start running ads, I asked her to, hey, share with me the URL for your landing page that you're trying to drive traffic to, and let me just give it a once over. And so she did, and as I looked at it, I love the offer, I love what we see here. We're going to break down this funnel, kind of look at it with a fresh set of eyes, and try to find as many helpful ways of improving Victoria's conversions, okay? This video is perfect for you if you are launching your first funnel, your fifth funnel, whatever the case might be, because there's always value in seeing somebody who does this as well, who is not you, looking through a funnel. What is going on through my mind? Is somebody external, somebody who's seen a lot of these things, where's the clarity, where's the room for improvement, all that good stuff, we're gonna show you here in this video. Okay, before we dive in, there will be a link down below where I'm starting to accept applications if you'd like to have your funnel reviewed. Uh, it's unbeatabletech.com slash funnel review, all right? Um, so before we dive into it, let's just take a look at this uh, page here. What is the offer? What are we dealing with? And by the way, if you see any awesome feedback for Victoria, I'm gonna share this video with her, of course. I wonder if she might even be here live with us, but I'm going to be collecting all this feedback and sending it back to her just as a nice way to say thank you. And um, so if you see any feedback as we're going through, of course, keep it kind, keep it civil, all of that good stuff. But if there's any way you can help Victoria out, I would love to see her get an extremely profitable and successful launch of her Facebook campaign to this uh, page here, okay? Now, to be clear, we are not gonna be diving into Facebook. We're not going looking at her ads or anything like that, taking it one step at a time. We're gonna dive into the opt-in page and the one-time offer page and take a look at what we're doing from the design elements. And if time permits, we might go ahead and do a little redesign or kind of show how we could implement some of the feedback that we'll be coming up with on this live stream. Okay, hope you're excited. Let me know down in the comments down below if everything's coming through loud and clear and let's take a look at this page. All right, let's always start with the offer. What are we actually getting here? This is a natural dying mini guide, not dying like kick in the bucket, but finding a way to change colors of things. So. Uh, Victoria is big on natural dye, which is cool. This is great because I know nothing about natural dye. I don't think I've ever used dye in my life. So maybe food coloring, uh, I think that would count. So what we have here is a bunch of different examples of her work of what she can do. It's nicely branded. Now, okay, all right. So we're gonna just take it all in before we start going through and looking at feedback here. All right, cool. D says I'm loud and clear. Fantastic. I'm super excited for this one, guys. And then we have a next page. What happens here? Okay, we've got a whole, oh, we've gone into a, oh boy, there's a lot going on here. Great. We're going to be able to help Victoria out a lot. Here is Victoria. She is awesome. Super, super cool. And when we do opt in, let's go ahead and uh, opt in. And I'll just use a little created email address. Let's go ahead and check it out. Wait. Okay, great. This is clearly a one-time offer. Nice and uh, in front there. Your freebie's on its way, but before you go, check out this one-time offer at 68% off. Okay, I like that. That's super cool. Natural dying guide. What did I just sign up for? Okay, so natural dying mini guide is free, and then a natural dying guide, I guess regular size guide, is uh, premium. All right, so we can go through here and we'll get into the specifics of each page. I'm just getting a high level overview here and I'm love, I would love to hear your feedback as we're going through. Be sure to put that in the live chat if you're here with us live or in the comments afterwards as well. Okay, La Creative Mama, <laughs> La Creative Mama. Natural Dying Method, eight steps you need to follow, need to follow to create bright and lasting color every time for silk, wool, cotton, and linen. Okay, good to clarify that. I'm sure it's very different. All right, fibers and dyes, materials and equipment. Very cool. Plus you get the bonuses. Oh, I love bonuses. Natural dyeing masterclass for $17. Workbook to record your experimentation. Oh, that's smart. Uh, you know, I do the same thing for uh, A-B testing. You record your experiments, what worked, what didn't work, and learn for it. 
good three bonuses some testimonials a buy button what is this a little plus button all right that, that should go frequently asked questions very cool and then if we click on it we go into the purchase the checkout page here for 17 dollars if i go to buy now awesome okay oh and then you that's interesting you click off the side of the checkout form we're on send all right here and it'll actually take you over to the home page don't like that but that's probably a limitation of, of send all there all right so that's what we have going on right now i'd love to hear what your thoughts are um, what I think we should do, the best way to approach this, is let's go page by page and just start showing out ideas, options, my feedback from somebody who does not know this. That's oftentimes where you're going to get the best feedback because if you are the guru, sometimes if you're on, you know, if you think about the alphabet as progress, like A, letter A is the absolute beginner, letter Z is the best in the world. If you're somewhere in like letter M, N, O, like you're midway in the alphabet over there and you're trying to sell to people who are at letter A or letter B, like they're just in the beginners, oftentimes you forget how to relate to people who are before you, like people who have not reached the levels you've reached. And so having somebody who does not, who's not at that level, who's not at letter M, N, O, P, um, all that, it's really good to have them look over your copy, your sales copy. Does it make sense? And I will be providing that feedback authentically because I have no idea <laughs> about uh, natural dyes. All right, let's take a look at the homepage and we'll just be working top to bottom. And I'll be circling the screen as we're going through to provide feedback. And Victoria, I think we'll be able to take this and take some action on it. Okay, first thing I see is I love that the logo, this is okay, having a logo at the top of the page, but I would most certainly want to remove the menu. Having a menu Especially, we have to consider the different uh, mentality here of paid traffic versus organic traffic. If you're sending somebody from Facebook organically over to your blog post or over to an opt-in page, it's kind of okay if they're bouncing around to other uh, you know, portions of your website because you found them organically, which means they're somehow connected to you, which means they're somehow a bit interested in your topic and they might be able to go browse and, and find what they want. However, we're doing direct response copy here. So that means we are sending people directly to a goal. There is a, a, a input and an output. Input is ads, output is leads and customers and sales and all that good stuff. So distraction is very, very damaging in this scenario. I would want to there will be a theme on this review. As I've kind of gone through here, I realize the theme is going to be reduce distractions to increase conversions. And so that's going to be what we're going to focus on here with Victoria. I would definitely remove this. Uh, it looks like, let's see what theme you're using here. I might Normally I can tell just by clicking on a few things. I think this might be the Astra theme. It might be Cadence. I'm not entirely sure from this, but most of them will have the ability for you to remove um, the menu there. I would do that first and foremost. All right, natural dying free mini guide. Not bad, not bad. It's a, it's a good headline. It doesn't grip me so much. Natural dying free mini guide. That's what you're getting. The feature is a mini guide, and the outcome is you're going to learn how to do natural dying. But what is the benefit, and or what is the pain? Like those types of emotions, um, you have to be somewhat careful, especially in the world of Facebook and and paid ads around using too much negative. Um, connotation in your headlines, but you can certainly juice up on the positive side. So, you know, you know what I, I, an idea is get 13 recipes on how you can save time and create beautiful colors for your kids or something like, I, I don't exactly know what you're using this co uh, colorful dye for. It looks like it's for yarn and all of that. So it's cool clothes. So craft one of a kind, unique, colors for your clothes so you can stand out amongst the crowd get started for free with this 100 free mini guide um, point being just saying hey free mini guide if they're not already in that world which is likely who you're going to be attracting with ads people who are not already there but might have some ancillary interests like they're maybe they're stay-at-home moms maybe they're homesteaders there's something that's keeping them interested or somehow they're in your targeted audience but you really got to break down why? <laughs> Why do I want this? That's what it is. Why do I want it? And you can do that in the tagline, but I really want to make sure that that's up in the headline, like in the big text uh, at the top. You want to make that crystal clear, and then you can reinforce the benefits in the subheadline here. I do like 
easy eight step process to create bright, bright colors from natural dyes that will last forever. All right, honestly, th this should be up top. I mean, if, if you don't rewrite the headline, that little tagline there is a significantly better, uh, um, it, it, not, not saying the first one is bad, but that bottom portion there is fire. It's great. It, it, that's very good. Um, it, it hits all the right buttons. Oh, and I've got Jonathan here from WP Tonic. Good to see you, buddy. Been a while. I've been, uh, I've been in hiding. I'm coming back out and chatting some more with everybody. I'm loving it. I love this lay flat image. It looks great. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't change anything there. That looks awesome. And then first name and email address. I am of the opinion that if I'm not going to use the information, I don't want to ask for the information. Um, over time, I have gotten away from requesting names in my opt-in forms purely for the reason that I tend not to use them in my marketing. What I found is when I did collect first names or first name and last name or any additional information on my opt-in forms, I... <sighs> If I reviewed my list and I looked through the people, I would see a lot of gibberish on the first name field. So then I think about this. Okay, if I'm, if I'm getting, let's say 10% of the people don't put in their first name or they, maybe they put in a very long name or something like that, what's going to happen? What's the outcome of me collecting that information? If I send a broadcast to my whole list and I include, hello, first name as like one of those insertable short codes or uh, personalization fields, it's gonna miss 10% of people. 10% of people are gonna quickly see this is a robot sending this out because nobody would send out a gibberish name to them. Okay, so the benefit of personalization is it feels good like to see, oh, hi, John, and, and you start your email with that. That's, that's nice, very formal. But if 10% if of the people are already getting, and I'm throwing out these numbers here, right? But if, if a, a few people are getting gibberish, I would just remove it entirely, uh, but again, personal strategy, review your list, make sure if, if you want that information there. I love having a testimonial right after the head headline. That's super good. Another thing we can take a look at is down here at the bottom. Why, why do you, why do you hide this? Don't hide this. I don't, I don't know many of these things. I, I know this one because it's ours, but I, I don't know many of these uh, brands, but your audience will. So I would bring this up right here. <laughs> You know, having a testimonial is great. And then I'd probably say, you know, as featured in something like that, bring that up. You know, like right now, they're getting the benefit at the top. They're seeing there's some social proof already. Now they want to see if you have any sort of authority to teach this. And nothing better than a, a list of logos and brands and recognitions to show that. All right, getting started. Yes, you heard right. You can produce the most amazing break. This is great. I had no idea you can create bright colors from flowers and veggies. I'm, I might, I might sign up. For, I did sign up for this. I'll, I'll read it. <laughs> All right. So now I'm curious here, going with the theme of reducing uh, distraction. One thing I'll let's jump out of order here is get rid of this. You have no business trying to make money on ads on your landing page. the The sole purpose of this page is to get leads and then be able to sell your own products. Last thing you want to do is have people, people think I want to go traveling right now, go to Hilton by clicking on that ad. Yeah, you, you might've gotten a penny from me clicking on that ad, but you just maybe spent a dollar uh, losing me from, from a Facebook ad for perspective. So certainly remove ads anywhere on your landing page. There are some uh, really well-known and really good uh, marketers who sell courses. And when I was just taking a look at what they had to offer, went to their checkout page, ads were popping up on their checkout page all over the place. And these guys are awesome. Like they do everything great, except for that. Like you gotta help them with their funnel because you wanna make sure you keep things super clear, super focused, especially when you're getting closer to the sale, right? All right, so if I click on this, okay. Super good that you have all these, um, you know, ultimate guides to natural dyeing. But I'm going to pose a question here. I'm going to challenge you right now. I showed up from Facebook, right? Always think about the customer journey for a free natural dyeing mini guide, which is a mini guide. Like it, it's already kind of diminutive because your one-time offer is a bigger guide. If I scroll down and I, in order to get this mini guide, I need to put my name and email address in. Okay, not bad. But then if two scrolls down to the page, I see an ultimate guide that I can click off of for free without having to give you anything. Why would I opt in for the free mini guide? I mean, this is, this is very valuable right here. This is a great thing. 
And you could maybe even just send traffic to this page and not ha even have a landing page. But again, I wouldn't have so many ads on, on a website I'm trying to pay for traffic. And, and by the way, none of this is like negative. Like this is all like thinking from it from a different perspective. Oftentimes bloggers come into things thinking that, okay, I just want to get traffic because I can make get money from ads. I can get people on here and affiliate marketing is a good thing. All these strategies. But then like, Things start to change when you switch from kind of a classic blogger mentality to a bit more of a marketer's mentality of like, okay, I'm trying to identify my ideal target and I'm going to try to funnel them through a customer journey to result in a sale, um, a testimonial, whatever the goal is of that funnel. So this is one where oftentimes, you know, as a blogger, you want to interlink as much as possible. You want to show all of your great stuff embedded in all your other great stuff. Except for landing pages, I, I would. I think these images are great, but I would not link off of this page. Um, a beginner's guide to dies, and also, like, you're creating a little bit of confusion here because I've got an ultimate guide for free here. I've got a beginner's guide for free here. I'm I'm losing motivation to give you my email address to get a mini guide. Yeah, you know, and I, I think that's pretty clear as we're going through here. Beginner's guide. All these things are awesome. Like, I think all these images would be great, and and I'll. As we scroll through, I've got a couple of ideas of what we can do with those images uh, to help you and not not hurt your conversions. And then we come down here to a blog role. Okay, so we can see you know, she's very active. This is super cool. Avo avocado dye, my goodness. So it's clear she's putting out a ton of value and a ton of content, but this does not belong on a, on a page for, for opt-in conversions. Um, what you could do, is you could do a, a illustrated benefit list. And what that means is you could say, instead of having such a long headline here, say something like, look at what is made possible through natural dyeing. And you could ha maybe have one of those alternating where you have, let me get my things here. You could have this, this image here and then maybe a few benefits of this. So you could show, you know, um, easy, you could show free, cheap or free, all these benefits, and then you can scroll down a little bit further, and you can have another image down here with a few more benefits. Keep it very concise, very easy to see, and either remove links entirely from these images, or you could link them as an anchor link to come right back up to your opt-in page. Because again, on this page, if the goal is to create a funnel that's going to generate predictable revenue, you need to remove as many variables as possible. Every link that takes them away from that process is a variable that does not serve you. So all these images, if you're doing the, the illustrated benefit list, you can link back to the, the guide here, or you could put another guide uh, maybe down here below the list where they can sign up and get, um, get the thing again. And for a page of this length, for having as much value on this page, I would want a second one of these embedded. Most likely, what I would uh, not most, what I would do is have an opt-in up here at the front. Perfect. They click over. If they're the right audience, they don't need to see any more. They're like oh, free natural dye mini guide. Awesome. They're gonna sign up right here. But then there will be a significant portion of people who need a bit more convincing. Who is this lady? What do like? Do I really want to give her anything? As you scroll down, you start to get con converted. You start to say yes, I do want this. Uh, slap another one. You can just copy and paste. If it looks like you're using the Gutenberg editor, you can just duplicate that block and bring it down here to get another sign up form down below. All right. And I think that's another thing I would want to have, but, but underneath the benefit statement. So um, we might need to draw. Well, anyways, what I, what I want to have here is just a little blurb about who you are and how you came to do this. Not a full origin story, not a, not a full 1700 word blog post about uh, how you got here, but just enough. You've got a little bit of authority by having your uh, features here, but I want a little bit more um, to say who you are. You know, Victoria, you're, you're clearly okay with putting your picture on the website, which is great. That's a great conversion and trust builder and just show a little bit. Hey, I'm a, I don't know, mom of two, been homesteading for 17 years, and I've developed and I've helped over 5,000. I don't know how big, how big your email list is, but I've helped over 5,000 um, moms just like you get started and grow with natural dyeing. Something like that would help, and that should be towards the bottom of the page because that's gonna be one of the last things that people will need to convert. 
is, okay, I see what it is. Sounds cool. I see some people trust her. That's great. I see that she has some authority in other areas. Cool. I see the benefits and features of the thing. Awesome. But who is this person? And do I, do I trust her? Does she have one of those likable faces or whatever the case might be in conversions is super helpful. Oh, Zachy is giving some love here. Don't know why thousands of people are missing this webinar. I know, right? Where are they? So I'm glad you're enjoying it and hope it helps, but this will be evergreen. All right. I'm gonna take a little pause here and read another comment. I agree, Jonathan. If you're gonna spend thousands of dollars on paid traffic campaigns, it's so important to have a second opinion from an expert like me. Oh, I appreciate that. Have him look over your campaign. That's why we're doing this. Oh, and here's a good idea. Scary Good Marketing says, possible name for the guide, The Naturalist's Guide to Bright and Long-Lasting Dyes. I like that. That's very good. You're scary good at that. Scary Good Marketing. <laughs> awesome. All right. So that's enough, I think, on that page. What we can do, depending on how long this goes, if we have some time, I'd be happy to... Uh, design an example to kind of give you an idea. Sometimes if you look at the pages already built, it's hard to see some other ideas and I might be able to pop one up in the future. So let's go ahead and come over to your one time offer, which is not here. Here you go, OTO. All right, wait. Okay, first thing I would probably do is, and this is personal preference. I know a lot of people will have the first word on the page, wait. I'm not as much of a fan of it personally. I like saying, you know, awesome job or you're great. Thank you so much. Something kind and be like, your freebie is on its way to your inbox, but, and then you can kind of stop them in their tracks, but it can take five to seven minutes to arrive, which normally is not true, but hey, sometimes it can happen. So I'm okay to put it on your, on your page. But before you go, be sure to read all this, uh, you know, everything on this page because it can help you increase your results. Um, I do like that you have a one-time offer at 68% off. So this is good. I would just maybe change how you transition into that. Um, but it's, it's a small thing, right? This is super nice. I know they can be kind of overplayed or some people aren't a huge fan of them, but I still like those digital mock-ups. You can go to something like glorify.com or, um, or Canva and Glorify has really implemented a really nice um, digital mock-up feature recently. But when I see this, my, here you are, there you go. When I, I see this, it doesn't reach out as a guide. And, and you know, especially since before, you had this, which already shows the guide. Um, and that was to convert somebody with just an email address. You're gonna need a little bit more uh, to show them how interesting and how you know flourishing your digital product is, you know, show if there's any computer components, show a little computer with an image of it. It could be the same image, but I would like to see it packaged up as a digital product because that can help people understand and, and set their expectations for the perceived value of the product. Uh, and as we'll see further on down this page, there are a lot of components in here that would fit nicely in a mock-up, and because. They've already seen this. If they see on the next page a whole lot more, they're gonna be much more likely to read through because they're already obviously interested in getting the free guide. So if they see a whole lot more, you'll definitely increase your conversion rates above the fold, right? Like so very right here where this image is, I wanna see an image of the full product. Okay, how to dye fabric and yarn using natural dyes in eight easy steps. That's super nice. It's super good. Um, I'm going to harp back on, so what? Like, this is how you get the thing, but why do I care about that? And because you have it right here in bold. So I would probably change this around to say, quickly learn in eight, or let's say, these eight easy steps will help you achieve bright and long lasting colors from natural dyes tested over you know how many years or whatever the case might be some some impactful thing there uh, i would i would stick away from like all your good stuff is like hidden like how to do the uh, eight, eight, oh i like eight easy, eight easy steps that that belongs up at the front i like bright and long-lasting colors from natural dyes works every time these are all great things don't hide them behind a whole bunch of words put them up front and get people excited and, and you know a copywriting 
tenant is that every like the headlines job is to get people to read the subheadline. The subheadlines job is to get them to read the first body copy or the you know the head, here image like you're always trying to just work them through the page work them through the process so a lot of um care has to be gone to make sure that not only is what you're saying correct but it's interesting it's curiosity invoking and it actually adds value all right kind of scrolling through here this is great specific dye specific process equals bright beautiful bright and lasting color um now th another little could go either way. If you have figured out some sort of a specific process, right? Like, ooh, specific process. You've got an opportunity here to brand this. I don't, I mean, you could say the the law creative method, or you could have some acronym of, let's say you need to rinse, rinse, hang and dry. You could do like the RRH method or R3 method or something like that. You can find a way to make it curiosity invoking. Because when I see specific dyes and specific process, I'm like, there's an opportunity there to really captivate people and create an open loop where if you describe something in like the marketing language, like the R3 method or R3 dye, something like that, they're going to want to know what that is. Whereas if you just say a specific process, you're like, okay, it's a tutorial. So that, there might be something there. Okay. <laughs> I, li I like this image. But I was expecting when I saw this image to hear a little bit about you, about uh, like the introduction of the author. So I would probably, in the beginning, I want to make this page about the product and the offer and the benefits of that. And then a little bit later on is to reinforce that page and reinforce the um, the authority you have for that offer with uh, with you and a little bit of an about me blurb. So that this image might work a little bit further on down. Oh, and here it is. This is awesome. This looks really, really good. This is better than I expected. Um, I probably wouldn't have it so far down. I'm just, I'm kind of getting my, the lay of the land here of this page. Something to test. Like my gut feel, which is not worth a whole lot because everyone's tactics is going to be different based on the audience and, and what works best for them. And the only way to learn that is through uh, conversion rate optimization and experimentation. But my gut feel is that that box shot image would do better up here than this image would. Because also you can use that image three times, four times on your page, depending on how long it is, you're going to have almost like a good song, it'll have verses where there's unique content, but there's always a refrain, there's always that chorus that you come back to. And what I like to use which I mean, I'm giving a lot away for free in this video here, but why not? We're just on a roll is I like to use the value stack as the refrain of a sales page. So you'll like sh show this thing like, okay, the natural dying guide. Again, I think, I think we can, can make that name maybe a little bit sexier, find something like ultimate beginner's guide to dying fabric. Like you're, you're closer here. So let, we got to find a way to brand this a little bit. Um, but I would have that. Then I would say, here's what you're going to get with, eight to 10 little check marks of all the different goodies. And optionally, you can see so you have you have the check marks here, you have the bullet points. Uh, optionally, you can choose to embed the value, the value of that component. And then you can say, um, total value is this, I'm offering it at a discount of 68%. You your price today only is this click down below to buy. Uh, that would be a, a good refrain that you could use. And then in between the reframes, you're putting verses in, you're putting in unique, unique content, your backstory, um, the, the, the guide of what's in the product, kind of walking through it. Uh, so that, that's a way to do this. I would certainly have a buy button somewhere here. There needs to be a buy button here. And I would probably space out the, um, I'm kind of confused what the difference is here. You've got two different lay flats just like a, a screen height away. So there's something different here. Guide will teach you this. Freelance questions plus you got these bonuses. Okay, I'm a little bit confused as to the difference of trying these, uh, these here and, and confu confusion is, is, is not good. You want to you want to make sure people know what they're getting. And so maybe there should be a header here to show what the difference is between this or maybe like here's a peek inside the guide, something like that. 
but I see you're reusing some components between the, the lay flat images. And that is, uh, the lay, flat, the sales page song. <laughs> Thank you, Susie. <laughs> She's sitting over there writing an article trolling me on my live stream. <laughs> Orchestrating consistent sales. I see she's got her copywriting hat on there. Very valuable feature. <laughs> All right, let's keep on. Let's wrap this thing up here. I like the bonuses. Dep I think you're using just the default uh, editor, so it can be a little bit tricky, but I'd want to squeeze some of that content in. I, I find that that's using a good portion of your horizontal screen real estate and... It's fine on mobile, which a good portion of your audience is likely on mobile. Uh, but I find that just from a design perspective, I'd probably want to squeeze those in a little bit, and we'll try to squeeze. We'll try to show an example in a second. I love the testimonials here. Nice that you highlight it like that. Get your guide now. Amazing launch. Pro oh, that's awesome. So I would ask the question: If if this is an amazing launch price offer, that is very good captivating captivating copy. Like if it's true. If you're just launching this, I would I would show this as a launch price. I would show that way way higher up on the page, um, because people are, that's going to build in an additional level of FOMO because they know okay one time offer. But if this is a product that's been selling for years and it, there's it's not that scarce. But if it's a one time offer on a launch deal, that's like a double trouble <laughs> in a good way. Uh, that can really help. I don't know what that plus button's doing there. That's probably just a little little thing that needs to be removed. FAQs is great. Um, last thing I would probably say on this page is if they're down to this point, if they're reading the FAQs, they're super interested. I would not make them have to re-navigate up to find the buy button. I would make sure that I have one final refrain to use the sales page song. <laughs> I would have one last um, uh, uh, bl section block where it restates the product shows the lay flat, shows the benefit, shows the value, shows the price, and the buy button. I would have that down to the bottom. Make make sure that's there. Uh, and aside from that, I mean, we definitely gave a lot of ideas, a lot of feedback on this, but it's super nicely done. Clicking over here, natural. Okay, everything still lines up. Okay, Sendal. We started with Sendal as well a long time ago, uh, which is great. Um, just throwing it out there. You might cons I, I'm not a big fan of like if some people just happen to click off in inadvertently. I don't know if that's a setting you can undo, but I'm not a big fan that it's going to redirect them off the checkout process. And like in general, the PayPal is just very. I don't. Know, I lose trust when I feel like I'm going off to some generic payment processor. So you might look into not necessary, but you might look into embedding that checkout form on your sales page on your one-time offer page. Where are we at here? And maybe having it here and maybe having the different buttons could link back, could anchor link to that uh, checkout form. A couple ideas, not necessary. Um, without good measurement, you won't really know if it's helping or hurting you, but it, it's something to keep in mind here. All right, cool. <laughs> so I hope that was helpful, guys. Um, I think that Victoria is a total rock star. Um, and. I, I think I know where she got this sales page from. This looks rather familiar to some of our teaching here. Um, oh my gosh. What what type of music are balloons afraid of? I'm guessing pop music. <laughs> <laughs> Silly goose. <laughs> All right. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, let me check one thing here while I don't, I'm not sharing my screen. Okay. Well, there's something weird going on. I'll need to take a look at here. All right, but, so it's working, but there's something weird going on, on my website right now, which, you know, naturally. So if that was fun, if you like that, if you like the idea about getting a funnel reviewed for free, I do have a page set up on my website, unbeatabletech.com slash funnel review. You can check that out. Pay no attention to the pink logo there. I'll have to figure out what's going on here. Um, and I have some little instructions here on getting your funnel reviewed. I'll need to check one little thing here of course right before going live i had an issue with my uh website so fun stuff that is life we live in but by the end of the next hour 
this will be up where you can uh, request, show me your sales page, your funnel. Happy to do these. They're fun for me. I think you can tell I had a good time doing this. And I think that it can be helpful to a, a lot of people to get this type of feedback. And with that, so yeah, Norton, you can certainly come to unbeatabletech.com slash funnel review. And I'm happy to walk through it um, once that form is, <laughs> is still there. And if you want to, just go ahead and send me an email at support at unbeatabletech.com and I can put that in the queue. Um, there are bonus points. If you leave me a nice testimonial, video testimonials, extra bonus points, you can get moved up to the top of the line. But I'd like to do one of these per week. I think they're, they're good content. I think that's good value. And it's nothing for me to prepare, which is great as well. So that is where we're at. Uh, our online generation says, love you guys. Thank you so much. Love you as well. Appreciate you being here. And if there's any questions you guys have, feel free to put them in the chat. I'm going to do one quick thing here while waiting to, to see a couple of questions if they come up. And just kind of making a little bit of a plug. I do like, even if you choose not to use this tool, I think that the inspiration you can get from using uh, an already nicely built out um, page builder like Thrive Architect can be helpful. So let's just take one look at, as I saw your product, I was like, this could be a good fit. What? Take a look here at the product focused page. And what I want to sh Let's see if it's going to be happy. Okay. I think it's happy. It's definitely something weird with the colors right now. Good times. All right. Well, some of the some things are looking a little bit wonky, but pay attention to like the flow of the page, how they flow through this. So quick headline of what the product is, a little bit of a tagline and an image of the product itself, straight to testimonials, straight to benefits, not features, but benefits, what you get out of it, showing all the individual products and components. Who is this for? That's a really good section that we didn't even talk about in our review is who could use this product? Who is it built for? Who is it designed for? Who is it not for? It can all be helpful conversion tactics. Um, you know, calls to action buttons to go to your buy button, more testimonials, FAQs, and get the outcome today. So notice how, like we mentioned in our review as well, having a FAQ section is absolutely important and vital. Uh, but if you answer their question correctly, you want to reward them by making it easy for them to find the, the buy button. So make sure there's a section underneath that. All right. I definitely have a couple things to take a look at in tech land. So I hope this is helpful. If you also want to get my personal take on how the right funnel blueprint should be put together, what makes sense, what doesn't, let's see if this page is working here. You can check out, um, a page I need to take a look at. So unbeatabletech.com slash blueprint is my freebie, but I've got a little bit of tech stuff I got to figure out here. So I'm going to hop off the live here and very, very nice. Thank you, Zachy. Loving the new name, Unbeatable Tech. Seriously, unbeatable. Appreciate that. Appreciate all of you. Thank you for joining me here live and I will see you in the next one. Take care.